Today, I'm gonna to be sharing 10 incredible places that I think that you should travel to in Mexico. Of course, these places are completely subjective. I love this country. I have spent five years living in it and another two years since I left, returning again and again to places I love and to completely new to me places. This list includes cities, beach towns, dusty little villages, entire states, <laughs> uh, and why I think that you should visit these places. There's history, there's amazing food, there's culture, there's um, incredible people, uh, and so much more. Natural beauty, mountains, oceans, lakes. This country is enormous. There are 31 states and the Ciudad de Mexico, the, the District Federal, so there's a lot to see. It's very big. You certainly cannot explore it all in one year. I have been returning to Mexico now for seven years <laughs> uh, and I have not still yet seen it all. However, these are the places that are a little off the beaten path perhaps, maybe some of them you've heard of before, but places that I think are changing, are growing, are becoming incredibly wonderful, safe, and fun destinations in Mexico where you can spend your vacation. So without further ado, let's get started. Baja California Sur is located, as the name suggests, at the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula. Is it a little bit of a cop-out to name an entire state as a vacation destination? Perhaps, but with a 10-day trip, you can explore a lot of this beautiful place, and if you have even more time, you can explore further. I spent much of 2021 living in this region of Mexico, and I absolutely fell in love with it. From the dusty streets and boutiques of Todos Santos to the beautiful beaches near La Paz, the birds and sea life around Espiritu Santo the incredible snorkeling in Cabo Pulmo, and the laid-back vibes of San Jose del Cabo. You can extend your vacation in the state all the way up to Loreto and Mulehe if you have more time and want to get off the beaten path. If you're visiting in the winter months, you can get up close to gray whales in Magdalena Bay. This region of Mexico is rugged. It's for surfers, hikers, adventurers, the nature lovers, the foodies, and those that want to spend most of their days by the water. It's a wonderful place year-round, but it's particularly special from December to April. I have tons of videos on my channel as well as a guidebook that I wrote about this region of Mexico, all of which are linked in the description below. Riviera Nayarit a fancy name given to the coast just north of Puerto Vallarta, in the state of Nayarit. This area is home to places you may have heard of before. Sayulita, Bucerías, Punta Mita. But it is also home to quiet little enclaves like San Pancho, Lo de Marcos, La Cruz. Bucerías is a great base for exploring this coast. It has all of the amenities you might need like restaurants, supermarkets, hotels, Airbnb rentals, hospitals, and good prices, and you're only about 15 to 20 minutes by car from most of the beautiful places along this coast. As Puerto Vallarta grows bigger and more expensive, many tourists are flocking to the north for a little bit of peace and quiet, myself included. After spending 10 days in Puerto Vallarta recently, I finished my trip with a week in Bucerías. I rented a car so that I could spend my days in San Pancho, Lo de Marcos, and eating at all of the delicious restaurants in Sayulita. You can discover jungles, mountains, and sea in this region of Mexico, with hiking trails, quad bike excursions, boat trips to Islas Marietas, and some of the best ceviche spots I've encountered anywhere in Mexico. Riviera Nayarit has huge resorts and luxurious all-inclusive hotels if that's what you're into but it's also a place for those that want to get away from it all, who don't mind washing sand out of their hair and dust off of their feet at the end of every day. It's for those that want to sit at a street side food vendor, eating the freshest seafood, or getting a little thrashed by the Pacific Ocean while at the beach each afternoon. In the next few weeks, I'll be releasing videos from all of these beautiful towns. So be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on seeing more of this little slice of Mexican paradise. 
Mexico City will always hold a special place in my heart. I lived here for four years, and it was here that I started my entire business. It's here where I fell in love with Mexican cuisine, culture, music, people. It's here where my education of this magical country truly began. And while I don't think a city of over 20 million people is everyone's idea of a vacation, I think this city has so much to offer those that are interested. Mexico City is for the foodies, the museum lovers, the history buffs. This is the home of the Aztecs, the capital of New Spain, the place where people from all over Mexico have come for work and brought their food and culture with them. There are mezcal and pulque bars, taco stands open at every hour of the night, some of the best restaurants in the world, incredible history to explore, and so many different neighborhoods. The city has grown so much in recent years and went from being a place no one wanted to visit to being one of the most visited places in Mexico for American and other foreign tourists. You can find safety and security in neighborhoods like Condesa, Polanco, Coyoacan, and Roma Norte. And you can get away from the tourists a little bit in neighborhoods like Navarte, Escandon, Santa Maria la Ribera, or get lost in the daily shuffle in the Centro Histórico, where there are so many people, it doesn't really matter whether they're tourists or not. Guadalajara is Mexico's second largest city, but for some reason doesn't get the attention of Mexico City. Perhaps because it doesn't have the glamour, but it certainly has tons of amazing history, stunning natural beauty, and some of the best food in the entire country. Home to birria, tequila, and mariachi, there are a lot of reasons to head to Guadalajara for your next trip to Mexico. If you're interested in seeing a little bit more of Guadalajara before you book your trip, check out Alex Whitman's YouTube channel. She lives in Guadalajara and shares tons of great tips about exploring this region of Mexico. Located in southern Mexico, along the border with Guatemala, Chiapas is a state that is slowly gaining more interest with international tourists. It is Mexico's poorest state, and therefore doesn't have the infrastructure of places like Cancun or Cabo or Puerto Vallarta, but that's also part of its appeal. The state is home to much of the country's coffee farms, and if that's something that interests you, get yourself over to the Ruta del Café in Chiapas. For history, culture, and laid-back vibes, you'll want to base yourself in San Cristobal de las Casas. Or explore one of the country's most incredible ancient ruins at Palenque, there are waterfalls, lakes, jungles, canyons, and indigenous groups all over this state that offer you a peek into cultures in Mexico that you probably won't see anywhere else in the country. Chiapas is for the budget backpacker, the inquisitive traveler, the adventure lover, the people who don't mind squeezing into a crowded van to get to the next destination. It's for those that want to get off the beaten path, who don't mind being surrounded by Spanish, as well as other indigenous languages that you definitely don't know. My only caveat for those that want to explore Chiapas is to beware of the water. It's the sickest I have ever been on my travels in Mexico. Don't even brush your teeth with it. Absolutely avoid tap water at all costs in Chiapas and make sure to wash all produce with iodine or some other food hygiene product you trust. Valle de Guadalupe is Mexico's best wine region and one that has grown immensely in the last 10 years or so. Located in Baja California, about 30 minutes away from Ensenada, Valle de Guadalupe has become a destination all its own, with boutique hotels, top-ranking restaurants, and less than three hours drive from San Diego. If you want to enjoy beach and wine, base yourself in Ensenada, where you can dig into some seriously delicious seafood, enjoy the long sandy beaches in the area, and then take a day trip to explore the wineries in Valle de Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. 
Chihuahua is both a state in northern Mexico as well as the name of the capital of the state. I think you should visit both. Starting your trip in the capital allows you to indulge in some of the best barbecue style tacos and northern Mexican cuisine as well as introducing yourself to a completely different part of Mexico for those that have been to other cities like Mexico City or Guadalajara. Once you've spent a few days exploring Chihuahua, make your way to Creel, a small town to the west of the city of Chihuahua where you can begin exploring Copper Canyon. Take a few tours of Creel, learn about the Tarahumara people who call this part of Mexico home. Then hop on El Chepe, the train that will take you through one of the most picturesque parts of Mexico. Deep canyon, towering mountains, heat, cold, a touch of luxury, and some adventure along the way. Chihuahua is for people who want to get off the beaten path in Mexico, for those that have done some exploring in the country before and want to dig a little deeper, see something they haven't seen before. It's for hikers and campers, zipline lovers, and fear of heights conquerors. Just like Chihuahua, Guanajuato is both the name of the state and the name of its capital within the state. Again, I recommend visiting both, but especially starting with the beautiful city of Guanajuato. Many people skip over it or simply visit it as a day trip from the busier and more popular San Miguel de Allende. However, this town has so much to offer in terms of incredible food, fascinating history, and beautiful views. It's also a good base for exploring nearby Mexico magic towns known as Pueblos Magicos, such as Dolores Hidalgo and Mineral de Pozos, if you're looking for a quiet colonial town to study your Spanish, Guanajuato has several language schools and plenty of great restaurants and food stalls to practice your skills while you're here. If you want a Mexican beach town that has amenities like top-notch hotels, a plethora of beaches, is easy to get around, has some great places to eat that are affordable, and you never need to make a reservation, then you need to book your next Mexico vacation to Huatulco. Located in the state of Oaxaca, on the southern coast of Mexico along the Pacific Ocean, this town is home to nine different bays and over 30 beaches that you can often have all to yourself. There are some resorts in a few of the bays, but others have nothing but a parking lot and a taxi rank, so you'll have to bring everything you need for a day out at the beach. The town is small but lively by night, with local Oaxacan cuisine on offer, music in the plaza where locals enjoy dancing, and a few bars where you can get merry enough to convince yourself that you can dance too. Merida is a city that you can easily get to from Cancun airport and is one of the most culturally rich places to visit in all of Mexico. Located on the Yucatan Peninsula, it's home to the Maya people and thousands of years of history. Merida is packed with amazing things to see, do, and eat. It's also an easy day trip to places like the ruins of Uxmal and Progreso Beach, the small town of Valladolid, and the yellow town of Izamal. Merida is for history lovers, food fanatics, and small city lovers. Last, but certainly not least, I couldn't make a list of a vacation spot in Mexico without at least mentioning one beach town in the Caribbean. 
It's no secret if you've been around here for a little while that it's not my personal favorite part of Mexico. But it is magical, there's no denying it. Whether you want the big towns full of bougie hotels and restaurants like Tulum or Cancun, you want great amenities and beautiful beaches in Playa del Carmen, or you want something quieter like Acumal or Puerto Morelos, there are a lot of options along the Riviera Maya. But one that stands out and should not be missed on a trip to this region of Mexico is the beautiful island of Cozumel. Cozumel is for the island hoppers, divers, snorkelers, beach lovers, and boat lovers. Take a day trip to one of the island's isolated beaches, or just relax at a beach club all day, stopping to take a dip in the warm Caribbean Sea. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. All of the places that I mentioned, if I've traveled there and made videos or written blog posts or guidebooks about them, they are all in the description box below. So have a look. If you have any other questions, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.